Steve, do you want to uh, mute everybody? Because there's been a lot of background noise, so. Unmute, Joe. Unmute yourself, Joe. Yeah. Uh, if you're going to be a speaker or one of the, the uh, directors speaking, uh, unmute yourself and be ready to speak. If you come on and want to speak, then uh, before you speak, uh, please unmute yourself and we don't have to ask everybody to unmute. Uh, and raise your hand. And uh, raise your uh, hand on the uh, on the dashboard there, so we can see uh, those who want to participate. Okay, uh, with uh, with that, uh, we will uh, start. Uh, Welcome everybody today. We've got uh, 46 participants so far. Hopefully uh, we're gonna have a better group today in, in view of the situation and uh, with COVID and uh, Dr. Parry uh, coming at a very opportune time. I don't know if we, uh, we didn't plan it this way, but uh, it's just working out. Uh, let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, with that, uh, as I said, in view of what's happening, I think uh, let's have a, a moment of silent reflection, uh, hoping that uh, the situation with the COVID stabilizes and we get back to uh, some decent numbers, but uh, going into the season, uh, it looks uh, that we do need some help. Thank you. Okay. Uh, as we uh, indicated last week, our chairman, uh, nominating committee chairman, Bob Loop, uh, read the list of officers. Uh, they were on the uh, meeting minutes and uh, they are available online. If you pull up the, uh, the, uh, the meeting recordings and uh, the elections will be held on November 19th. Uh, Bob, uh, I know we yes, said uh, if anybody wants to nominate uh, or be nominated, uh, maybe for the next uh, meeting uh, note, and uh, since we still have time before, post your email and uh, contact information so that, or maybe send an email out separately with uh, or uh, Lou can make a note of your uh, contact information. So if anybody wants to contact you to uh, make an additional nomination, they could. Okay, I, I would maybe ask Carl, I don't know if he's on the call or not, to uh, just put that slide up uh, next time. That would be fine. And, uh, you know, with my contact information, if you need my contact information, Carl, I'll let you know, but I think you have it. And, uh, you know, I haven't received any emails from anyone or um, uh, anybody speaking up in this meeting is welcome in terms of uh, nominations from the floor, but uh, those are always welcome. I mean, the nomination committee did a great job in pulling together this list, but it doesn't have to be the end all. I know uh, quite a few uh, people are interested in helping us out in any way they can. So um, please get a hold of me or any member of the nominating committee would be great. I thank you, Bob. Carl, are you there? Carl. All right, I'll send a note to Carl. Okay. 
All right, uh, just a reminder, not that we need it, uh, next week is the, uh, next Tuesday is election day, and uh, not only do we have the national presidential elections, uh, there are numerous elections uh, for our state representatives, and uh, regardless of how you feel nationally, the state representatives, state senator, and uh, rep the rep uh, affect us uh, more immediately and sometimes more dramatically. And I think we have more control over that. Uh, just as an aside, is it just me or is it uh, everyone? This has probably been the worst, dirtiest campaign for elections from anybody in any office. I have not heard anything positive out of any candidates. They just call each other names. They lie because if one says one thing and the other one is saying something else, obviously one of the two are lying. Uh, it's just been a dirty campaign. Nothing positive in any of the candidates and it's disgusting. Where is the ethics? and the civility in politics today. It's down the toilet. And uh, I don't know what can be done. I don't know if we as an organization uh, can voice an opinion after the election to all of the candidates that are running and send out a letter. Uh, I have something to think about, but it's been, in my opinion, disgusting from the top right down to the lowest rep. So the good thing is after Tuesday, we don't have to hear any of these ads and campaign uh, rhetoric. So we just have to listen to the uh, ads for uh, Medicare and uh, supplemental and advantage plans for at least another month. We're hoping that we don't have to hear anything after next Tuesday, but I have my doubts. Uh, well, at least we won't have any ads. <laughs> next slide, please. Okay, uh, just for your information, we talked about the mail-in ballots uh, and uh, you can verify it at the uh, website that's uh, shown here. I dropped my ballot off at the uh, government center on Monday and I checked on uh, yesterday and they already said they received it on the Monday. So it was within, uh, within a day and a half, uh, it came up and uh, it showed that it had been received. So it, the system works. Today's speaker, as I indicated before, is uh, Dr. Michael Parry. He's the Chief of Infectious Diseases at Stanford Hospital. And uh, very anxious to hear what he's got to say and what's going on uh, with everything. So please stay online uh, after the meeting and uh, Listen to Dr. Parry. Uh, we had him, I remember, a couple of years ago when they were building the Stanford Hospital and uh, talked about all the improvements that they made in the new building. And uh, up until COVID, at least, uh, Stanford Hospital was uh, one of the best in the area for hospital-borne infectious diseases. So um, he should be... A, He's always very interesting to listen to. Larry? No, it's still here. It's still you, Joe. It's the speakers, Joe. Okay, who? Uh... It's still you. On the speakers? Yeah. Oh, the, oh yeah, I, I keep I keep thinking it's the morning program. 
<laughs> All right, we, I'm sorry, Larry. <clears throat> you could have covered for me. Oh, I didn't want to steal the thunder. <laughs> uh, next week, uh, we have Christina Crane, uh, the executive director of the Stanford Senior Center, uh, with her annual Medicare update. And uh, I'm holding off on making my decisions, although I think I know what I want to do. But I just want to, again, she's been very informative and educational in telling us uh, the latest uh, information. And it, the situation is fluid. It changes uh, sometimes slightly, sometimes a little more uh, evident uh, each year. And on the 12th, uh, Mark Laurenti uh, is going to be talking about the Department of Homeland Security. On November 19th, Mark Albertson, uh, who has uh, always been uh, a treat to listen to uh, with his uh, various uh, takes on history. And uh, this session he's going to talk about the trial of the 20th century which was the Nuremberg uh, war criminals and then on November 26th uh, Thanksgiving is no meeting and uh, we have now uh, a full calendar right through the end of January uh, of speakers and uh, hopefully uh, you get yeah. You'll enjoy them. Okay, Ira is uh, called and uh, Lou let me know that uh, Ira is not gonna be here today. Uh, he had a previous uh, doctor's appointment. And uh, so with that, Lou. Hi, uh, everybody. We had the uh, minutes sent uh, for the October 22nd meeting. The online attendance was 50. If there are no corrections to Ira's minutes, uh, Joe could cast a ballot uh, for everyone and accept them. So done. We will accept the minutes as uh, presented. Okay, the uh, 920 discussion groups. Uh, this morning's was very interesting. Thanks, Joe, for uh, leading the discussion on investments. Um, next week, uh, Art Feldman will lead a discussion on their election results. Uh, we may or may not know uh, the presidential uh, results, but certainly we should have a feeling for the Senate and some of the local events. So um, that should be uh, a lively discussion. Hopefully most of you will uh, come in a little bit early and uh, take part. On uh, November 12th, Bob Butke is going to talk about technology. The 19th, uh, Joe D on current events uh, will bring us up to date on what's going on in the world. And of course, on the 26th, we have no meeting and uh, for Thanksgiving. So um, that's it for the month of November. Uh, yesterday's walk was um, uh, probably did not take place because of the weather. And on Wednesday, November 4th, we will be um, uh, changing the venue for that particular day. Uh, the walk will take place in Waveney Park, which is in New Canaan. Uh, the meeting place will be near the paddle tennis courts, which you can access through the Latham Road entrance. Uh, as you can see here, two weeks ago, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid uh, took part. Uh, they come by various aliases, uh, which look like Joe and Franco. But um, if I can recognize them through the masks, uh, it's always fun. And if the weather's great, it should be uh, nice. Waveney Park's a beautiful place if you haven't been there. So do feel uh, free to partake and we'd love to see you there. Well, Larry, uh, to get, uh, what's the best way? Go up 106? 
Uh, either 106 or 124. Just put um, uh, Life from Road into your GPS and uh, it'll get you there. If you go up 106 and you take a right on the Talmadge Hill, go past the Talmadge Hill train. train yeah, under the underpass. Yeah. Well, actually, no. You, you take a take a right. Uh, you take a right south of the Merritt and go up the hill past the uh, the train station. Continue on that, and then you take a left when you get to Lepham Road. Oh, that's the other way, yeah. It's okay. the first left past the uh, past the train station. Yeah, that's that's a very easy way to go. Uh, some of us uh, historically have even uh, parked and used the train from uh, Talmadge Hill years and years and years and years ago. And the paddle tennis courts, for you, those who don't know, it's after you go into the park, it's the first left. It'll be off to the left. You see the see the there's a dog the dog area, the paddle courts, and the, the pool on the left hand side. Okay. Well, hope to see a lot of you there. Uh, hopefully, the weather will cooperate. Um, okay, that's it for events. Uh, obviously, there's not a lot that we can do these days. So, uh, uh, this is one of the things that is a um, uh, an event that uh, guy as many guys as they want can participate, and spouses or um, significant others or friends uh, are invited. So feel free. Okay, Larry, I, uh, I would uh, ask the membership, uh, all you guys, if uh, you know of anything that sounds like it's something that we can safely do, uh, at least through November while the weather is holding up uh, an outdoor event or something, uh, let us know. Let Larry know. Uh, it might be something that we might want to uh, put together and uh, participate in. Uh, it's it's you know having gone on some of these walks and having gone to the golf outing. Uh, you know it's really nice to uh, to see each other and to. Uh, to be able to talk and uh, mingle. And uh, as you can see, even in our photo, we kept a safe distance and uh, it, it's been good. So if anybody can think of anything, please let us know, let Larry know, and uh, we'll try and organize something. Bill, you got something to say? Uh, yes, if, um, if you're a non-resident, is there any problem parking there? Uh, I don't no, think no, so. Nobody's Nobody's checking anything. I, I've been up there a couple of times in the last few weeks and it, there's nobody checking anything. Great. Thank you. Carl, do you, you got your thumb up. No, that's, that's, that's a prior error. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I turn it over to Carl, which is the next slide. Okay. Um, we have a, uh, We've had a member, new member hiatus. We haven't had any new members since uh, early early in June. Um, it is a difficult period for all of us, uh, but uh, you know, echoing the remarks of uh, of Stu, that the uh, you know it, it's it's everyone's it's in everyone's interest to recruit new members. Uh, it's the lifeblood of our organization to uh, continue to replace people who who move away or uh, leave the organization for one reason or another and uh, please feel uh, encourage people to attend uh, our walks in, in the park if, if nothing else and uh, maybe that'll encourage them to participate in our zoom meetings but um, keep up the effort and uh, do what we can thank you Carl. phil you're Good morning up. everybody um I do have some news to share, but first we'll see if you have any news to share. <clears throat> Dave Kaplan? Yeah, that, that'll be the news I want to share. Okay. Because Dave's got his hand up. Yeah. Dave, Unmute Dave yourself, report. Dave. Dave will report for himself. <laughs> yep, I, I certainly will, Phil. I've uh, actually got two items to uh, report. 
one extremely good and the other started out not so good, but turned out to be very, very good. Firstly, uh, my son, Jeff Kaplan, is an assistant professor of dance and theater at Manhattanville. And today, uh, his first book is being published, so we're very excited about that. It, it's uh, entitled Involuntary Motion, and it's focused more at academia, uh, but uh, we're going to get a copy for sure. Uh, the second item is that, as a few of you know, uh, recently I was diagnosed with, uh, with uh, prostate cancer. Um, I was in surgery uh, the day before yesterday. And the good news is uh, I've got a clean bill of health. Uh, the surgery was uh, completely successful. No need for follow on treatment of any sort. But guys, I would urge you, if you are not getting your, monthly, your yearly PSA test, please do it. Uh, it was important uh, that I got mine and a good result uh, followed. Thank you, Dave, and God bless. Bill? A lot of the times, um, the treatment is just active surveillance. Even if your PSA is, is high and you, you have a first biopsy, um, there's no necessary treatment if your Gleason score is, uh, is low enough. If they just put you on active surveillance and you keep on testing your PSA and, uh, you know, you may or may not need another biopsy in a year, but uh, uh, not everybody needs treatment. So, uh, Yeah, if I could add to what uh, Larry said, there's certainly uh, uh, multiple uh, 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 treatments you can take. Uh, in my case, I, I could have gone the radiation route uh, both radiation and surgery have the, the same positive outcomes. Uh, but as Larry said, every case is individual. And in my case, surgery was, was the, uh, the optimal approach. Hey, Bill Monko? Uh, yeah, along those lines, guys, I, I just went through two months of uh, problems with prostate. And I would just say, if you're having a problem, Go get it checked. I kind of let it slip and it really messed me up big time. So uh, we we're all in that age group where it's important, but uh, get it checked out because it took me two months. I'm just getting back from it. So there's my comment about that kind of stuff. Um, I have a comment as well. Go ahead, David. Well, I was just going to add uh, to, to what Bill said that uh, we're lucky here in Stanford. We have... Uh, excellent uh, doctors, both on the, the, the surgery side and neurology, as well as in radiation. Uh, I chose to go into Mount Sinai uh, with um, a, a doctor who is extremely well regarded. The point being, we've got many, many options. And, and for most, most people who have the high PSA, active surveillance, as Larry said, is certainly a, a viable option. Carl, are you, oh no, that's, not your hand. Um, I'm, <laughs> Bill, go ahead. Joe, can I say something? Thank you, Joe. Um, it's certainly great news about you guys who have come through the challenge. Uh, when I moved here 20 years ago, I had just recovered from, in fact, the house I'm sitting in, uh, I remember coming here wearing a, a bag uh, that was required for urine post-surgery um, for insole healing took place and I totally healed and everything is fine. There is a problem that I wanna call everyone's attention to. And that is at a certain point, Medicare will not pay for the PSA test. Well, I think it's the age of 85. Uh, and my urologist here in Stanford uh, at a certain point said to me, you know, you're at an age where it is no longer necessary to check your PSA. And that's probably why Medicare uh, denies it as a claim. And this year, when I went for my annual blood test and physical, my primary care doctor is no longer an independent person, but part of a group. 
and the group sent in uh, a request for the laboratory to test my PSA. And sure enough, Medicare sent me a denial. So those of you over 85, please be aware that there is an issue with Medicare paying for the PSA. Do you know what the cost would be or? $200. $200, well, wow. you know, you're going for 300 plus dollars for uh, shingles uh, shots, uh, $200 is a <laughs> good <laughs> investment. <laughs> Thanks for that insight, I feel a whole lot better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next slide, please. All right, Dick Harper, you're up. Dick, you want to unmute yourself? Good morning, everybody. We got all the information on the slides. Thank you very much uh, for doing that. Uh, we've had a couple of books about the Second World War, and here's another one on the a bomber group of the guys banded together and it should be an interesting book. And Ambrose, uh, we know is a very good author. And then a longer book for January is The Splendid and the Vile, but I think we'll enjoy it because Churchill is such a significant and colorful figure. And then um, another adventure book with Hampton Sides and uh, we've enjoyed his books already. <clears throat> so that's the lineup. We had a good discussion yesterday on uh, the book we had read, which was about the Lewis and Clark expedition. And I think we all learned a lot about that expedition more than we learned in high school. <laughs> all right, thank you, Dick. Okay. Okay, and uh, again, uh... Donations to the food bank uh, at the break. Someone will be sitting by the table. Oh, excuse me. That was last year's. Uh, we're not going to have anybody sitting at a table at the break this year. So it's up to each of us individually to make the effort uh, to keep the donations to the food bank. And you can do that. Uh, two simple ways, writing a check and uh, indicating on the check and maybe with a little note that uh, you were prompted or re you know, requested by the Senior Men's Association to make the donation uh, as in previous years and send it to 461 Glenbrook Road. It's 906 in uh, Glenbrook. And uh, or donate online uh, at Food Bank LFC, Lower Fairfield County org, dot org, and indicate uh, they have a space where you can, in memory of or in honor of, and just put SMAS so that they know that it's coming uh, from a member of our group. So uh, please try not to forget that. Uh, I guess each year, I know people have donated. Uh, anywhere from five to 10 to 20. In some cases, some people donated uh, upwards of that. Uh, so if you did it in the past, please do it now. If you didn't do it in the past, please consider doing it now. They need the help more now than ever. Stu, you have your hand up? Uh, yeah, uh, each year I know um, um, somebody, I don't know, I forget who tells us the amount of money we donate. Um, will somebody be keep, keeping track of what we're donating and be able to tell us? Uh, I don't think so because we're donating directly to, and even before, uh, I don't think we kept track uh, of how much was donated. Uh, the only thing I think, uh, I don't know if Mort is on, uh, I think the only thing they did was just took a name of who donated, but never indicated uh, how much. It just went into the envelope. If it was cash, if it was check, I think they didn't even, you know. Yeah. They may have 
put it together, but I don't think they kept a tally of. Uh, I think Morty told us. I think Moore did tell us last year. I think it was a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. Oh, previous, took, year, previous he, years, he, it's been close to that. Yeah, he kept an amount, uh, but I don't think individually. If you dropped the twenty dollar bill, he wouldn't even. He didn't even know what you dropped in there because he just opened the envelope and you put it in there. Yeah. All right. So I don't this think. Was, yeah. Dick Harper here. Uh, Mort turned that job over to me, so it's pretty easy this year. But I do uh, encourage everybody to give money to this uh, food bank. They're very good. Yeah. Okay, so that being said, next slide. Okay, guess what? We're going to wake up in daylight again, maybe. Uh, so daylight savings time ends. Your clock goes back. Remember fall, back, spring ahead. So we're going back an hour. Uh, we gain an extra hour of sleep. So uh, keep that in mind. This is Saturday night. All right. Uh, I guess we have some time. Uh, first, uh, before we go into uh, just one more on, Joe, just one more point on that. Uh, the other major thing there is to change the batteries in your smoke, smoke detectors and your uh, carbon dioxide detector and any other places where you have batteries in your house. Even though they say these are 10 year batteries or whatever, it's a good move to change those batteries every year, every six months. Every in fact, on Talk that subject, my uh, I started getting a, uh, a, a a beep alert on my uh, carbon monoxide uh, detectors, and it was the end of their life. So I ended up uh, actually two weeks ago getting three combo smoke and carbon monoxide detectors and installing them. So that's another thing that uh, they usually have a seven. Uh, unless it's a long-term battery, but uh, they usually have a five to seven year service life and then you have to replace them. Joe, I know um, Dr. Perry may be on. I know uh, the, the uh, his assistant's name appears on our list. Okay. Is that Andy? Yeah. Mm, maybe yeah. Okay. Uh, Dr. Parry, are you on? You're mute, uh, Andy or Dr. Parry. You're muted, so if you can unmute. Uh, they're just signed on, or I'll see if we got. Okay, they're unmuted. A photo. There's, There's no minutes. photo. Still got ten minutes. Okay. Hello, this is Hello. Andy Co from Stanford Health. Hi, Andy. Hi. This is Joe Andriana. Uh, Doctor Parry is on with us, or not yet? I believe he is on. We don't see his. Do you know what he be? Do you know what he be under? Yeah, we have a to be smart. It's time to try. Okay, kind of the. 